picture of where we stand today in Pakistan um, and the agriculture sector, which has uh, evolved uh, in a reasonably efficient manner, uh, given that in the start of our uh, creation as a nation state on the leadership of Qaeda as Muhammad al-Jannah. What was then West Pakistan, today Pakistan, had about a population of 32 million and 47. Today we have, uh, we can multiply it by a factor of seven. It's between 220 and 227 million today. And uh, so, by and large, uh, we have met many of our challenges. But uh, when we look at other countries, uh, especially in the Far East, uh, countries such as Japan, Republic of Korea, now China, uh, there is a lot more ground to be made. Uh, because when China became independent in 1949 through a revolution under Mao Zedong, Japan, of course, became uh, came 100 years early, 1861, through the main aspiration, and Republic of Korea became independent post World War II. And we became independent after World War II. So when you look at, because um, the way I look at the world is a little different, uh, because we cannot justify where we have not met our challenges by you know, making a certain kind of uh, whatever word you may use for having not reached the standards where we should have, but as I said, we've reached some standards, but many need to be met in the future, and that's the biggest challenge we face today in Pakistan. And that challenge from 47 to today is because we have multiplied so fast as a population, and that's the biggest challenge. So to even feed it in an uh, adequate form of nutrition, uh, now we say that 19% of our population is below poverty line, which is $1.25 per person per day. And uh, when we look at the quality of our nutrition, uh, again we don't measure up to the more developed countries on uh, the basic elements of especially protein and vitamins. Uh, the other element that I see in terms of agroeconomic base is that but Pakistan is totally area is 196 million acres out of which approximately 49 50 million acres is cultivated of which 31 million acres is irrigated and there's a lot of difference in productivity in irrigated uh, areas as opposed to Barani or rainfed areas and of that 31 million that are cultivated 80% is taken up of that area, but only five crops, low value crops in my opinion. Wheat being taking up nearly 36% of that area, followed by four other crops rice, cotton, sugarcane, and now maize. Maize has emerged as a major crop in the last 12 years because of the poultry industry. Maize production 12 years ago was about 4 million tons, today is up to 8.8 .8 million tons. So it's record production this year for maize. Rice again, we have record production, 9.1 million tons, and we, this year we have nearly, we had a carryover last year of 2.7 million tons of rice. So we have nearly 8 million tons of rice for export, and we only exported 3.6 million tons last year, so our big challenge this year is how will we export that rice? And exporting rice means exporting water. Rice, rice is a gusher for water, it takes up a lot of water as a sugarcane. Relatively speaking, in the Kharif crops, cotton takes up the least water. But tragically, cotton has been going down. I have tried very hard in the last 24, 23, 24 months since I've taken over this responsibility to revive cotton. Because cotton used to be the main crop of Pakistan. And we did revive it to, to an extent last year by having an extra 2 million bales from 7 to 9, our highest production of cotton has been 14 million bales twice. We were ahead of India 30 years ago in cotton. 1991, we were 12.8 million bales. India was only 11.4. Today, India is now 32, 38 million bales. China is 32, 37 million bales. 
America, which used to be the leader, is still between 19 and 23 million bits. These are the three major cotton producing countries of the world. Why is Pakistan left behind? Because we failed in the last 23 years to contract BT technology, talking about technology. Now that's one very major setback, because no other country in the world <coughs> except one had that quality of technology, BT technology as it's called, uh, technology in cotton. They contracted it, the Chinese did it in 1994, 1996, the Indians did it in 2002, other countries did it, and they've gone like this. We did not do it, so we went from here down. So that's the difference when technology, that's a really a excellent demonstration or illustration of what technology can do and what technology cannot do. So I would say that the one element of technology demonstrates in the Pakistan canvas of our crops, as I said, the four or five major crops take up 80% of our land, and the rest, including livestock.